as uh, we will get into the game loading in right now into the grand finals game one here between Meet Your Makers and Gamut Gaming. All right, and we are in the game, and I can only see they have cookies with them. They have the Explorer's Biscuit, the total biscuit of rejuvenation. Um, let me get everybody into the right lane. I can only assume Twisted Fate is going to be in the mid lane with Dr. Mundo in the jungle. We, ha we don't have Diamond Fox in the middle. That will be interesting. And yeah, as expected, here's the lane swap. All right, yeah, lane swap. You can, you could kind of see this coming just because, uh, well, when you put uh, Cogbaw in the game, you want to give him the best chance that you possibly can get to get some early CS, to get an early game advantage, to push things towards that late game. Because if you can get Cogbaw in a late game, it doesn't matter if your solo laner had a little bit of a rougher time because your AD carry is just going to be so massive. Yeah, and we're looking at Dr. Mundo and Sona now waiting in this bush, so maybe they were expecting... Um, and they invade by the guys from Gamma Gaming. They are no known for their hyper aggressive counter jungling. But this time, well they're just just going to sit there and wait, I guess. Um, they're not doing that much right now. They're just chilling in the jungle. Whereas the guys from Meteor Makers they have taken up defensive positions and Saru might run and rises or Diamond Prox. He has the gold cut open, Alex is moving in, forcing a flash on Zaru. And well, a flash for a ward. Is that worth it? Probably not. Um, and also I do want to say, uh, somebody in chat pointed out that, yeah, the lane switch could also be because you do want that double golem advantage to start things off. Because when you play Kog'Maw in a lane that doesn't get uh, double golems early, that puts you a level behind. And then you're like, okay, well, how am I going to deal with, you know, my opponents already starting things out strong against me, especially when it's Twitch and Sona. Yeah, the things of note, look at Edward, he already has 700 hit points on level 1, and that that's huge. Usually you start with around 550, so I can only assume that he has picked up a lot of health runes. Yeah, something you actually see out of a lot of uh, support players. I was actually talking to Masterwork, the uh, support player for uh, Fontis Haja School, said uh, you usually spec into a lot of defensive runes, less so into that utility tree that we see a lot of North American supports use. So that's probably where he's going to get most of those. Yeah, but this should be fine. I mean, he is in the top lane, he is there with Kog'Maw, so the, his job for today just adds additional gold to Kog'Maw, especially if you're looking at his abilities Blood Boil and Ice Blast. Those are two abilities that are a lot of value, just pure gold. I mean, if we're looking at... I believe it still gives 40% of max level, so that's definitely 900 gold you have there, right there. All right, so it will be uh, just to go over a little bit of the lane matchups before we start off the game. You can actually, before we hit that, uh, Makata actually coming around a little bit late, finds Diamond Prox, but uh, Diamond's actually going to jump onto Dr. Mundo, takes him down dangerously to the low. There's the cleaver, the flash, going to get the knock up onto Dr. Mundo, but there is Edward. Is he going to go though with the first blood? Going over to Zin Zhao. And that was beautiful by Edward there, moving all the way from the top lane to the river, catching Mundo just as he flashed over the wall. Well, I think he didn't expect that he uh, turned around to try and go back, I guess, but apparently he was in time to get off his Ice Blast. Mackler taking a few tower hits to the face. Uh, he's not going to like that, but at least being forced back to the turret and no Mundo. I can just uh, farm here, well, at least try and farm uh, without dying. Now in the top lane we have Dime Prox coming in. Cubon might be in a bit of a situation here. Teleport coming in for Twisted Fate. Is Cubon going to go down? Zaru just... Uh, coming in, and now he's fighting off against Genja and Diamond Proc. Genja taking a lot of damage. The ghost has been popped, but in the background, Edward picking up the kill. Yeah, so that will be a kill for Edward. Now, honestly, what's a Gambit Gaming game without Edward picking up a bunch of kills? Um, spotted out by the uh, Nidalee Trap, uh, did pick up the kill on Kuban, and that's cool and everything, but uh, really a lot of low health around the board for uh, Gambit Gaming after tanking up that turret. But nobody's going to go back quite yet just now from them, but uh, <laughs> look at Edward, man. This guy is such a bully on his supports. He knows Char is almost out of mana, low on HP, and uh, could probably get 1v1 there by Edward. <laughs> He's just going to walk back through through the turret without going through the jungle for fear of meeting up against Dr. Mundo. But uh, somebody not scared of Dr. Mundo is going to be Diamond Prox, who's just going to get full timers on this top jungle and take away the wolves. Yeah, and just look at the power that they have right now. Edward, actually, if you watch what he did there, 
He knew that a ward had been placed in that dry bush, uh, so he just waited out of vision, almost catching Twisted Fate even. Uh, that was well played by Edward. He knew where his opponent was warding, so he took advantage of that ward, giving him a little bit of a safe feeling. And the spear right now, well, nearly is only level 3. It's not dealing any damage whatsoever. Yeah, I do want to make sure to uh, switch Zed to uh, uh, top and then at least to mid. And that's actually something we should probably talk about. Because when you look at, uh, or Zed to mid and then at least to top, when you look at Charu, as far as that mid lane is concerned, it's going to be a squishy kind of twisted fate versus Alex Ish on Zed. Now, Zed is somebody, if you are skilled enough with him, it makes him almost impossible to lane sort of squishy champions just because his, uh, his all in is so, so strong. Uh, especially now that he's just now hitting level six, uh, look for uh, maybe twisted fate ganks. But really probably going to be more centered on those uh, Zed assassinations. Look at how patiently Alex is just waiting in there. Will he be able to get the jump on Charu? Well, actually, we're just already looking at the bot lane. Bot lane tower has gone down, and that's something we expected. We had Sona, we had Twitch. They were going to be pushing, as in the middle, there's a lot. So, yeah, flash down on Alex because he went too aggressive without knowing where his opponent was. And I think we are back in the game, uh, Rapid. And we are. So yeah, a little bit of an abrupt uh, repause and our uh, unpause, and now we're good to go. Yeah, let's jump to life, shall we? Well, actually, as we jump to life, Diamond Prox jumping right onto Zaru with his audacious charge with the gold card, pretty much locking him up for just enough time. So basically, we saw Mundo die to the dragon. That means that the guys from uh, Gambit Gaming will know that dragon has been done. So, yeah, we're back. That was a little bit unfortunate, just the way that the lag worked out. But uh, we will see uh, 1v1 lanes now versus the 2v2. So you were actually talking about this a little bit earlier, Techno. Uh, we're going to have, you know, as soon as that bottom tower got taken, immediately you see MYM roll top lane to do that duo lane up there. Now, they've not only taken down the turret, but also the dragon. So really, there's not a whole lot left for MYM down there in the bottom. So it makes sense to see them roll top. Yeah, and also makes sense in the fact that, well, Nidalee had a little bit of a hard time against Nunu and Kog'Maw. She got dived, as we saw at the start. So the guys from Meteor Makers, they did come back pretty well by taking those global objectives, but only 16 farming in the comparison. At least ended up with 29. So, if we're looking at total farm, the entire team of Gamut Gaming is definitely winning. Now you gotta look at how some of these builds are starting to work out. Now, uh, middle lane, you're gonna see uh, Char actually already with his Seeker's Arm Guard Doran's Ring as well as that Crystalline Flask. That is about the most defensive build you can go as far as an AP carry in the middle lane nowadays, especially against uh, the high quality assassinations of Double Doran's Blade on Alex Each. So he's actually feeling some pressure uh, going for Double Doran's rather than just like a Brutalizer, say. Um, but uh, so we'll be uh, making sure to keep an eye on that. But uh, Char getting chunked down there, so you can still see that's a little bit rough for him to deal with. Meanwhile, Darian down there in the bottom lane, just a cloth armor, but holding on to some gold. So we'll look to see what he buys next. Kuban, his laning opponent, goes for a Chalice of Harmony, and I really love that choice versus Elise. He's going to keep you high HP. Mid lane, it looks like Charu getting dived, and that will be the death mark to finish things off as Alex East just goes above and beyond the Call of Duty behind enemy lines down there in that turbot top lane. Mackler yeah, going to get taken out. You might want to like wait for one second as we jump right. As a replay, onto Zaru Zaru taking a lot of damage, Ignite goes down, and you were saying that stuff was going to happen in the top lane. And we're looking at Libic, Libic getting chased down, Ignite going down to Mackler. Mackler will go down due to the last attack by Edward once more. And I'm just going to say that my camera is slightly behind, so I'm going to accelerate. Um, has anything happened in the meantime? Uh, no, actually, after those couple of kills, the only real thing that's a big deal is uh, Alex actually having to Shadow Dash out, uh, Makata having some uh, DC issues, but other than that, uh, Middle Turret was saved there by the teleport in there uh, using uh, Char actually using Destiny to get back in time to save that one out. Uh, Cubon has some really good info. He knows exactly where Diamond Prox is, but uh, the really big deal right now is that Makata not in the game anymore, so uh, he's definitely going to have to get back in here as fast as humanly possible, because, I mean, 4v5 is not really what you want to have happen. Yeah, and definitely not, given the fact that they are 1,000 gold behind in the top lane. Just before you were talking about what happened in the bot lane, we saw Atward picking up the Vision Ward. 
Putting it in the bush and then numbing on the vision ward of Meteor Makers. Edward's still waiting here. There's a vision ward so they know. Mackler can't see them. Mackler taking a lot of damage, forcing him to flash away and a crescendo to save his life. So now they have no flash. They have no crescendo. And look who's coming! It's Diamond. He is thinking about going in. The blue turret in the middle goes down and Diamond is just standing here. It looks like Mackler has disconnected again. Yeah, well, if you look at uh, Libic, yeah, and that's probably why he did go back there. Libic has actually a pink ward in his inventory. Does Edward? Uh, no, no pink ward there. So, I mean, there's just a lot of uh, sort of weird disconnects going on across the board. Alex actually taking down the Wraith camp, going to find Cuban, but uh, is that going to be a good trade for Alex? Looks like he's uh, kind of backing off there and then having to go away, but either either way, Mackler's gone, uh, looks like Makate has gone, some uh, unfortunate, uh, unfortunate situations happening here, but hopefully they'll be able to get back in the game as it gets underway. Yeah, and I've been um, conversing with a few guys, uh, Mackler and Makate actually live in the same house, so they do, ta um, if something happens to one of them, most likely it will also happen to the next one, and I'm pretty sure that they're just pushing the lanes. Mackler going to be allowed to just auto-attack here. Mm, they're actually ignoring him. Look at um, Gamut Gaming. This, If this was uh, a different team, they would most likely just jump on, on Twitch with good reason, of course. But they know he's disconnected. He's having issues. It's only sportsmanlike to just let, let him well, stay alive. I mean, it's not much of a challenge to kill a DC player. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, depends on if you're, like, killing him under turn. Yeah, but you might want to look at the top lane as Zaru teleports in, and suddenly everything turns around. They are not killing Twitch, but they have lo lost um, Nunu at this point. Kog'Maw being chased down by Cuban he is nearly going to be in time to get there, but the Ghost... Well, and this is the power of Ghost, by the way. He's getting chased down, but the Ghost gives him just enough movement speed to keep ahead of the pack, even if he gets stunned just once. Yeah, it's really, really rough uh, when you do have these DCs uh, to deal with. But it looks like everybody's back in the game, so uh, should be having a little bit of an easier time here. Uh, Twitch is back. What's he going to pick up? That BF Swords online. But uh, in the middle lane, Alex, man, just having free reign of the middle. Uh, just continuing to push down there over and over again. I'm not sure if... Uh, if Gambit Gaming are just going to kind of group here and try to shove to win, because honestly, uh, when it's 3v5, not a whole lot you can do. You didn't just see uh, MYM go ahead and make that play top lane, so it's actually fairly impressive, if you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely, but at the same time, look at the guys from Gambit Gaming. They're not pushing, and there are a lot of things you can do here. You can start pushing, getting towers. Um, I mean, that is there. They have to have the right to do so, but the sportsmanship from the guys from Gamut Gaming, it has to be noted here. They're just, well, waiting for everybody to get back in action. And we're still looking at Twitch, still standing in the in the summer of platform, as they're actually giving the blue buff to Diamond instead of Elise. So it doesn't look like they're preparing to do much, but Dragon has respawned. And they decide not to go to Dragon. This is, well, at least it doesn't look like they're converging on Dragon here. Uh, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. You don't have a jungler, so uh, for MYM, there's no way they're going to be able to smite away that uh, dragon. For Gamma Gaming, they could probably do just about whatever they wanted, as uh, AD Carry and Jungle are disconnected currently for Meteor Makers. Uh, you're going to see a sun goes out onto Edward. There's the damage. There's Crescendo. Will it be enough? Oh my goodness. Uh, Living just gets exploded. Keep on going to flash over the wall. He gets hit by Ice Blast, but Charu is just getting 1v1 by Alex. He's so much damage to teleport away. Not in time. Deathmark will pick up the kill, a double kill for Alex Eish, and then the reconnection. And also look at how the guys from Gamut Gaming are doing this. They have Kogma in the top lane, they have Elise in the mid lane. They're just fighting 3 versus 3, not 5 versus 3. Um, we're just waiting for the reconnects, and we have reconnects incoming, reconnects outgoing, and then people leaving games. Um, yeah, th this doesn't look good for the guys from Meteor Makers, and I'm going to wonder what the teams will do with this red team now finally picking up the dragon and that was just Sin Zhao in Blue conjunction with Edward destroyed. as the to top and bottom turrets fall. Blue team's turret has been destroyed. 
All right, yeah, just Terrace being destroyed right and left. Uh, it's going to be a little bit unfortunate because it is one of the six. Three to one as far as uh, the kills or the turret kills are concerned. And uh, Darian just continuing to push down that bottom lane. I mean, Makata is back, but he's almost half the level that Darian is because he's just been camping out there in the bottom lane. And uh, yeah, doesn't really want to get anywhere near that spider. Yeah, and now we're just, well, uh, to the guys wondering what is happening. Uh, we're still trying to figure that out. We are ex we are currently thinking of internet problems that Makler and Mokate suffer from. So, yeah, this might be a 3 versus 5, but we'll uh, keep you on the updates all the time. And now we have everybody from Media Makers back online. Uh, Diamond Prox actually knew that blue buff was going down, so he walked over there to try to take it out, but uh, some good play by Libic actually does secure that. And, uh, ooh, uh, about to talk about that play by Libic. He just walks to Wolves. Oh, wait, there's a Diamond Prox. And that is going to actually be Edward picking up his third kill of the game. Just as many kills as Alex Ish and one more death. Yeah, and now we're just waiting for Nunu and Karpma just pushing... Um Gamut Gaming just taking their time here now. Um, s with everybody back, they can start fighting again, but they are 8,000 gold ahead. Just look at the farm difference that Twitch and Mundo have lost due to their massive disconnect problems here. Yeah, it's not just the farm difference. You can see the turret difference, three to one, and uh, the level advantage is actually huge. Look at uh, Spider going down bottom lane. Darian jumps onto Cuban. He's uh, has a two-level advantage. Takes him down a half HP. Drops the ignite, but will it be enough? Darius, there is the leap back out. Counter countered by Darian's Q and Diamond Prox coming in for the follow-up. Yeah, but Cuban is still trying to race away using that Cougar form to max effect, jumping away with the pants. Um, it sure looks like Diamond Prox is slightly faster than Cubon, but he has found a bush. Now he's going to try and do his best to jump out. Audacious Charge is available, but the first attack from the red buff slows him down. Diamond picks up the kill. In the meantime, in the middle, we actually have Alex Ish picking up the kill onto Sona. And Edward is here fighting with Makate, who is actually two levels below Edward due to all the disconnect problems. Uh, yeah, the big difference is, I mean, Dr. Mundo, he's a strong juggler if he can get the items that he needs. But uh, when he's down in levels, he only has a Kindle gem as well as those Ninja Tabai. What happens when Dr. Mundo or his team rather gets far behind is that uh, you have the laners start taking a CS in the jungle. He can't get to that super tank status, and he just keeps falling further and further down. Now, Char actually looking for the gold card, has to cycle through once, but will get it off, and then actually decides to turn around a little bit. Not quite what he wants to see. I mean, Mokata's coming in here, going to get some damage most likely onto Edward, but he's going to take so much damage from the channel. Absolute zero. Force the flash out. Damage goes off onto Edward and Genja, but they manage to stay alive. And now the ghost is popped by Genja, but this is way too late. Diamond now jumping in from the rear, though. A day's charge going out, the explosive from Ikatsian surprise blowing up right as Sona walks back. But it's not enough now. The ambush has gone out. Edward taking a love down. Spray and Frey going out. One more hit should be able to fish him, finish him off. Expunge going down. Now Diamond Prox diving really deep, jumping right onto Mundo with the Adacia charge. Is he going to get away? There's the Quest and Sweep. And. He's going to try and get away. The Cleaver barely missing. Venom Cask actually landing on Diamond. But they decide, well, we picked up two kills for one. Let's not take the Gambit to go in that far. Also, did you know the uh, Crescent Sweep has a new effect on this uh, Zinzao skin? That's pretty cool, actually. But to get back to the game, 4-0 Z, 3-0 Zinzao. It looks really hard for the guys from Meteor Makers. Yeah, I think the really the, the bigger thing for Meteor Makers is that they started out so strong. They picked up the turret, they picked up Dragon, and then thanks to those uh, unfortunate disconnects, uh, kind of took a seat and uh, watched as Gambit Gaming kind of snowballed over them 3v5. So they're kind of picking up the uh, the remnants of their game. I mean, I would have liked to see a regame, but we'd already had some kills and a really strong advantage across the board. So can't really do that. Uh, Alex down here in the bottom lane. I was talking earlier about how he just guaranteed to get the farm that he needs. It's 20 minutes. Oh, wow. Actually, Cubon flashing away. Going to get the move speed out. And there is going to be Deathmark. Goes on and Cubon gets slowed. And there will be the final tick to pick up the kill. And that marks a 5-0, Alex. And with an 8,000 gold lead, I would say that Gambit Gaming has this game in the pocket, even though all those DDoSs 
or D well, people are saying it's DDoS, so I can only assume that might be the case. Genja now getting caught out by Zaru, Maklar, and Libic. So that's one death cock motto. Yeah, you really can't keep him alive quite that long. And uh, so it's going to be a nice little like, kind of one for one is, uh, if you count trading that for Cubon. But uh, I mean, Sharu is actually doing fairly well if you look at the way the score is uh, shaping up. Only one and two. And actually, when Haunting Guy is looking for, uh, I guess I'd say, like a, a Lich Bane, uh, what do you think we're going to see next coming out from Sharu as far as those items are concerned? Well, there are a few that are that he can go for. He can go for the Abyssal Scepter, giving him additional magic penetration as well. As magic resist, Alex is actually coming in from the rear. Zaru taking a lot of damage and gets annihilated by Darien. Now in the top lane, Diamond Prox jumping right onto Libic. He's dancing away, but the Audacious Charge puts him right in range. Libic taking a lot of damage. Diamond Prox, well, that's one that Sona. Nice try by Libic, though, trying to juke that Sin Zhao. However, in the middle, Darien and Alexi are just going to try and push down this middle turret as well. 13 to 4. That's a 10,000 gold lead. Now, Darius at least going in onto Mokate. But he's forced back. Darien trying to get away. Cubon taking. Uh, well, dealing a lot of damage. The Spiders tanking most of the damage for Darien. Cocoon going out to the Cubon. This might be the re engage. Absolute zero being channeled by Edward. But only hits Magler for a little bit of damage. Yeah, I think it was a little bit overzealous there from uh, GG BenQ Edward, just because when you go in that far, you're really expecting some follow-up. The turret lives with just a couple HP, and uh, MYM actually able to push uh, GG off of their turret. Unfortunately, eh, kind of a Pyrrhic victory as it is 4-13, like you did mention, and an 11,000 gold lead. And it looks like the guys from Mega were trying to re-engage, but that was not going to happen. Meteor Maker still on the back foot at middle tower, down to only 200 health. And, well, one more hit, and it's gone. And uh, gone it is, but uh, when you look at uh, a couple of the things that have just been picked up, there's actually going to be the Destiny it goes out, and an immediate death mark right on it. Sharu, some more damage coming out from Alex Nietzsche, and that's just going to be one more kill after another. This guy is on a rampage, 6 and 0, dominating Alex Nietzsche. And, uh, well, that's about all she wrote. It's 4 to 14. Genja's back in the fray, pushing down that middle lane. And, uh, well, Gambit Gaiman looking strong. Yeah, but this makes sense. After all the uh, the, uh, the internet problems that the guys from Meet Your Makers have had, um, basically they were even. At the point of Dragon, they were dead even. Both that match gold. As Diamond goes in with the Audacious Charge, Genja landing the Livering Artillery. Darien now jumping in. Will Libby go down now? He will actually survive with a little bit of help. There's the Cocoon actually landing on Five Living Artillery barely misses Maklar. Now Darien, Genja and Diamond are going to try and kill this inhibitor. But I think then once that inhibitor goes down, that's going to kind of signal the end of days here for Meet Your Makers. I mean, they're about to meet them. Sharu first, though, he's going to get uh, hit there by the absolute zero. Crescendo comes out there to maybe try to save him, but no to no avail. Inhibitor will go down. That will be the first inhibitor of the game going the way of Gambit Gaming. And the fourth uh, kill for Edward. And, well, <laughs> we, we have seen him kill a lot this game. I believe he's actually currently on the killing spree. Now, Cubon taking a fair amount of damage from Diamond Prox. There are wards going down in the enemy base so that they know the exact timings of them going out of the base. And I can only assume they're going to try and end this right now. Uh, yeah, there's really no reason not to when you look at the way that the game has been going. Um, MIM started off, like we said, with that early advantage, but oh my goodness, Mackler just gets one shot by Alex Ish. Uh Yeah, that's, uh, that's a godlike Zed. Yeah, that's what you get after six kills. 250 farm. I mean, it's 24 minutes into the game, and 24 farm. Uh, correction. 250 farm at 24 minutes. Well, I guess that's Alexis for you. Very, very far ahead of the curve. It's just so, so strong right now. There's really not a lot you can do against him. You can see he actually has Warmogs, the Blade of the Ruin King, that Brutalizer and Double Doran's Blade. So Tanky does a lot of damage. Really not a whole lot that can get near him right now. You'll notice the CDR for Deathmark is almost back off of cooldown. So it's uh, really, really hard to take down something that A, turns invisible, B, amplifies damage, and then C, just continues to crush you over and over again. So if MIM want to have a chance, Chance of coming back here. Oh, Mackler actually almost stopping 
uh, Genjin from going back to base. If MYM want a chance to come back, they're going to have to A, stop desperate things like this dragon, or Baron rather, and uh, B, well, when it comes to defending their base, they're going to have to do that with the utmost precision, so as not to, uh, I guess, reap the, the uh, I guess, the tragedy yeah, of the benefits. disconnects. Yeah, 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 there we go. No problem, Rapids. I know this is this game has been quite interesting to say the least. Baron being picked up now by the guys from Gambit Gaming. And Alex, he, he sees a nice juicy rat to eat. Um, well, Mackler might be in a bit of a situation here as the death mark is available. Darian now jumping in. It looks like they might want to, to uh, try and flank him. Ambush going out and that will save his life. Now, Alex, he is on the tail of... Twitch dead mark going out, and I think this is one dead. Oh Twitch. my goodness! Just he look at the damage. Up. Wow, legendary. Yeah, legendary. This is just Zed snowballing over and over again. This time around, he has that uh, Baron buff for even more damage on top of that. I mean, if we look at his just raw AD, he's only sitting at oh uh, wait about 300 with only two damage items. So. Again, unless you have those Dorian's Blades for another 20 AD. But uh, yeah, it's really, really starting to look like not only is Alex Ish got mode 8 and 0, oh, but uh, really you have a lot more on the board. Uh, I guess the real You might want right to look at Zaru. Zaru going down. Darren just jumping on him after landing the cocoon. And, well, that was a lot of damage. Now, Mackler going in as well. He's going to try and deal a little bit of damage. Crescendo landing on Edward and Darren. Darren being chased down. Edward being chased down. Are they going to be picking up some kills? Ignite is taking on Edward. Absolute zero being channeled. And just look at that damage onto Makate. But, well, Edward goes down. Now, Darian, he remains. He picks up the kill onto Makate. Darian now fighting with Cuban. But Alexis and Darbrox moving in. Are they charge going out? And, well, that's one dead Nidalee. Yeah, that's uh, Nidalee. I mean, she's doing some work, but when you look at the rest of the team, I mean, you got one and six for Sharu, you got one and five uh, there on Sona, zero oh and four, one and three, two and three. I mean, it's looking kind of rough. They do have a Twitch, but really, that's about all there is. Now, Char is just going to get jumped on. Makes it actually back to turret thanks to a nice stun there from Gold Card. But uh, Gambit Gaming pushing into the base, looking to turn out game one in favor of Gambit. Yeah, and they're still just trying to siege it down. They don't want to take any unnecessary risks. I mean, they have a lot of shutdown gold on their head. Um, that is an additional 200 gold on each of the carries from Gambit Gaming. Except Corpo, actually. Macklin not taking a lot of damage. Just look at the damage going down. He gets annihilated, obliterated. Call it what you will. In the background, at least goes down. But, well, this looks like it's going to be the end. Gambit Gaming pushing down. Makata actually taking a lot of damage on the base itself. Diamond taking a... Sh uh, a pot shot from the Nexus Obelisk. But this looks like Gambit Gaming is going to end this. 1 0 to Gambit Gaming. And they're just going to continue, continue, continue. Absolute Zero being channeled. And that's the end of the Nexus as well. Rapid, are you still here, sir? I am indeed. Sorry, I had to uh, cough and then unmute my mic.